Hello, my name is George Aguilar. I'm the training manager here at Clayval headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the rebuild and the maintenance of our CRL 60 pilot. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to get, you're going to visit our website and you're going to be able to download and view the IOM for our CRL 60. This CRL 60 IOM will give you information as far as troubleshooting, operation, adjustment procedures, and disassembly procedures here on the left-hand bottom side. On the back side of this, it'll also provide you with an exploded view of the pilot, along with part numbers and descriptions for different spring ranges, It'll give you PSI per turns and adjustment ranges for different spring ranges for those pilots. And most importantly, it'll give you the part numbers for your uh, suggested part numbers for your repair kits. So speaking of repair kits, we have a CRL 60. So uh, we have our CRL 60 repair kit. If you are not sure if you have uh, which pilot you have. We, have. we do have a model CRL and we have a CRL 60. Today is our CRL 60. You may have some CRLs within your system. We do offer a CRL universal repair kit as well. So you want to make sure that you have your correct repair kit. All right, first and foremost. Now, for shutdown procedures on rebuilds of these pilots, please visit our website for other uh, videos. You want to make sure that you're isolated either through the pilot system with the shutoff cocks, your CK2s on the pilot system or shut down with gate valves within your system as well. Once you've uh, confirmed isolation, now we're going to disassemble the CRL. So first thing, is we're going to remove the black cap. You're going to loosen up this jam nut here. And we are going to go counterclockwise. I'm using a 3 8 nut wrench here, nut driver. I'm going to loosen the tension on the spring by going counterclockwise. All right, loosen that um, tension. Now, CRL60 has a bottom plug here. We're going to remove that. Remove that plug. Now the top caps here, they will either be flathead screws or they will be Allen heads. These are 532nd size Allen heads. So we'll remove those. This is why it's important that you loosen up the tension on the spring here because as you start to remove these screws, these cover screws here, if there is still tension on this spring, you may get this cover to get cockeyed a little bit or as these screws come off, sometimes this cover will stay put and then this, it'll pop off. So make sure that you loosen up the tension on that adjustment screw. So we get our cover off, all right? You're gonna find your spring along with the two spring guide caps here. Now you have access to your stem nut. Now, this stem nut here, there's a stem guide in there, um, a stem assembly. Down on the bottom of the body here is where you will have to use a screwdriver. You'll see inside where that disc sits, there's a screwdriver slot. You're gonna hold your screwdriver, keep that stem tight so that way you can back off the stem nut. Our stem nut. There's our Belleville washer here. Our diaphragm washer. Take our the diaphragm, the lower diaphragm washer there, and that gets us access to this part here. Now, to loosen this up, to loosen up this stem guide, you're gonna use, you wanna be careful and you wanna make sure that you're using a three quarter inch long socket. 
to remove this stem guide because if you it, it will be tight if you go to use a crescent wrench and you try to loosen this you have to be mindful that this these edges along the side right here that is your diaphragm support area all right so you want to make sure that you're not going this up or anything with the crescent wrench or any other uh, a wrench you want to use a long socket to break that loose. Now that that's loose, this assembly will now come out. There's our stem assembly, there's our stem guide. Now as far as maintenance in here, uh, again, this is your diaphragm support area. You'll see down below, there's your seat, a little bit of wet dry sandpaper, some 400 grit uh, sandpaper, clean this area up. Uh, your, your CRL 60 does have this side sensing port here. Make sure that that's clear of any debris or buildup along the side here and also the connection inside here, inside the body. Again, make sure it's in good condition. Clean that up. We're good with the body. Now, with this stem guide, you have an O-ring. And I'll show you. I got a little O-ring pick here. You got an O-ring that fits here. This O-ring, again, is part of your repair kit. There's also an O-ring in the middle. So we'll get our pick. And there is your O-ring. So basic maintenance cleanup on this stem guide here. Now on your stem assembly, this lower disc guide here, this disc is actually pressed into this disc guide. This comes as one complete unit. I'll show you in our repair kit here. This is, I'm using a universal kit, but this comes as one complete unit in your repair kit. So on the top of the stem, there is a small O-ring. We want to make sure that that you're getting to this small O-ring. You can see it there. Get to that small O-ring. Again, this is gonna be replaced. And that's basically all your O-ring. So now reassembling um, our, our new stem assembly and our disc guide here. So we'll use our repair kit here. Again, the universal repair kit is going to have a couple of extra O-rings, but those may go to your CRL. So if you're not sure if you have a CRL or CRL 60, get the universal kit. You'll have a couple of O-rings, but as you can see, I have them set here of the O-rings that I just removed. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have the O-ring that fits around our stem guide a little bit of uh, food grade uh, grease. We'll hold that in. All right, we also have this small uh, stem guide O-ring that's gonna go in the middle here. This one tends to be a little bit harder than others, but that's why we have our pick. So we're gonna fit that into the groove of our stem guide. There we go. We gotta make sure that we replace the O-ring on our stem. As such, a couple of extra O-rings. Again, these will go into our CRO. But we have new O-rings, new stem assembly. We have our new diaphragm, so the great thing about that parts list that I showed you before, after you have this disassembled, if you're not sure how this gets um, uh, put back together, the assembly, uh, assembly instructions, that exploded view will help you out. So, stem, assemb or the, uh, stem assembly, we'll slide that in first. And we will guide this back in. That three quarter inch long socket and we'll tighten that down. 
Now we have our lower diaphragm washer. Remember, when it comes to the lower diaphragm washer, you have a flat side. On the flip side, you'll see that you have these record serrations. Anytime you see these record serrations, you must remember that those are touching the diaphragm. So those record serrations need to be facing up in this case. Then our diaphragm, again, there's no top or bottom to the diaphragm, but it's always suggested by Clayval that you have the date stamp facing up. So we know what that date is. Now you have a diaphragm washer. Again, I talked about the flat face. On the flip side, you'll see two record serrations. Those record serrations are going to be touching the diaphragm face down. Next, we have a Belleville washer. This Belleville washer is similar to a pressure washer. Um, it does have a slight concave. You want that concave or the bowl facing down. So as we tighten up and we tighten that stem nut, that, that washer is going to flatten out. So let's go ahead and put that on there, our stem nut. And again, we're not going to get this tight unless you have your screwdriver on the bottom side. We'll hold that together and, and tighten that down, tighten that stem nut down. There we go. Now we'll get a spring and our spring guides back in. Now when you guys are rebuilding these, occasionally you'll find that your CRL is, is installed on its side. You want to make sure that when you put this spring and these spring guides on there, you want to make sure that before you put your cover on, especially if it's sitting on its side like this, that your guides don't drop out. So an easy way to do this, a little trick here, would be to take your adjustment screw and take it in about halfway. And then take your spring with the top spring guide, put that cover on, and now you can hold that spring and that disc guide in place. Here's that other spring guide, I'll put that on there. And if this is sitting on its side like this, I can slide this in and I can hold the cover and that spring and those spring guides in place and all I have to do is back off on that adjustment screw until it's flat with the body. So now I know I have enough pressure to make sure that these pieces do not fall out of line. Um, lastly, before we get this cover on, you want to make sure we do have a weep hole that's on the cover here. That weep hole is a tattletale to let you know if the diaphragm has failed on your existing pilot. This, diaph this weep hole needs to be facing down. If this cover fills with water, we want to make sure that this weep hole is going to be able to tell us that, hey, there's water dripping out. Um, the diaphragm's bad. If this weep hole, if you see that there is water coming out or if this is facing up, condensation can get inside or if it's near a, a sprinkler system um, or, or any type of condensation can sit inside this cover, water's going to build up, that spring inside will rust out. So when you're installing this cover back on, you want to make sure that that, that, that uh, weep hole is going to be facing in the down position. So if I have this valve and it's sitting in this position here, that weep hole is facing down. All right, let's go ahead and get our screws back on. All right. Again, that's a 532nd size on those Allen heads. We'll get that body plug in. We'll tighten that down. And now you have rebuilt your CRL 60. For startup procedures, please visit our website on starting up or adjusting the CRL. Also, you can refer to your parts list on, uh, or your installation operation manual on that CRL 60 for any startup procedures. That concludes this maintenance video. 
Please visit our website for future videos and for more information. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.